already quite a while ComfyUI had this function built in to combine several different nodes into one new grouped node. That function has had an overhaul a couple of months ago which now makes it much more useful. We can now decide which inputs and outputs and which widgets we want to see inside that new node. And that makes it quite a lot nicer to use. Let's have a look. This is the default ComfyUI workflow in which I already rearranged the nodes a bit to make it look neat and tidy. But we can do more. If I hit Ctrl and then with the left mouse button select all these nodes, uh, I can right click and go to convert to group node. That turns them into one node after I gave it a name. Let's do group loader and sampler because that is the function of these six. And there we have it, only one node that combined all these six nodes. Uh, what we see now is that we have all these widgets where they accidentally ended up. But the new function now is that I can right click this node, uh, first select it and then right click this node and manage the group node. That opens this window. Here on the left we see the six nodes that are inside this group. And here we see that we can select inputs. Well, this does not have any inputs. Uh, we can select widgets and say if, they, if I want them to be visible or not. Well, in the case of the checkpoint name, of course, I want that to be visible. Uh, but in the case maybe of... Uh, the latent image, I have a batch size and I always have that on one. So I don't have any need to see it. Uh, let's make it invisible. And also in the sampler, we have the denoise uh, and I never change it in the first sampling step. It's always on one. I don't need to see it. What we can also do is grab uh, this uh, here in the, in, on those six dots and then rearrange them. And I like my checkpoint loader to be here uh, right above the sampler. And let's have a look after I save and close how it now looks. Uh, I have a height and width, that's okay. Then the prompts and then I select my checkpoint and fill in the rest of the parameters. That is really neat and tidy. Using this group functionality, I have now updated my default workflow. Uh, the, the link is in the text in the description to a folder with all my workflows. Um, this default workflow works from left to right and it is therefore very easy to follow but it is already looking quite cluttered and busy and with the group notes i changed it into this uh, it has still six steps but uh, i took out uh, with the aid of uh, leaving out widgets took out everything that i never use and now i can focus on the things that i do use how uh, this default workflow works is from left to right we start with a loader group where we have of course our prompts and checkpoint and image size and also the styler is part of that then it is followed by the pipe sampler and that one is on the one that you need in the first step where you create a lot of images to select the ones that you may like to process further and that further processing it can start with a latent upscale and followed maybe if needed by a face detailer and then we start the image upscaling and then this column is the post processing and that has notes like color and sharpening vignette and uh, film grain and then the final step is to save the uh, image as a jpeg that's what i always do because in the ping that is generated at the first step we already have the workflow included this is how i work by default 
At the start, when trying out a new prompt, I only have the loader and the first sampler active and I can quickly try out a couple of uh, images, maybe uh, 6 or 12 or 20. Uh, it takes on my system with the turbo um, checkpoint uh, close to 6 or 7 seconds to generate one image. So I can generate a lot. Then select one that I like. Let's say uh, I like this one. Uh, well, let's wait for the next one. Then we don't have to start again. Yeah, I like this one. And that is when I first uh, uh, start the latent upscaler. And then it runs through that. And uh, if I'm satisfied with that image, I can select the face detailer, but in this case, I don't need it. Uh, so we can start the image upscaling, and that is done by enabling the JPEG output. The post-processing, of course, you can switch them on and off to your liking. And uh, in this case, let's, let's leave them off and let's quickly upscale this image and see what comes out. This is how I work in general. If you have a uh, EPA adapter or a control net that is just a stack here um, between the loader and the sampler and uh, I have not yet made those grouped uh, but they still are available of course in the G drive in that download link. Okay this is the image that just came out of this default workflow. Thank you for watching. Maybe see you back in the next video. And in the meantime, have fun.